Thank you for joining us again. This is Ultimate Academy's team presenting Onyx Financial Track. This is lecture number 19, and we're going to start talking about uh, inventory transactions. The first screen we're going to explain today is reverse item quantity. I'm sorry, reserve item quantity. <laughs> we use the screen to directly reserve items. Uh, by directly here, we mean that we reserve the items from the available stock in the inventory module. Uh, and not from the sales module. So the screen here is divided into two sections. From the upper section, we just need to select the branch from the drop down menu, which branch is making the reservation basically. Reservation type, that's going to be direct order. Then a reservation number will be added automatically after you click on add. Moving on to the lower part, uh, in item code, we will hit F9 to select the item that we're reserving. And once you've selected the item, the name, warehouse, and measurement unit will all come up automatically. Uh, in quantity, we punch in the amount that we would like to reserve. Then we have out quantity, where we can see the actual quantity that uh, came out of this item. And in reserve quantity, we, uh, we will just choose yes from the drop down menu to finalize our reservation. In case you want to stop an ongoing reservation, then instead of yes, you can just change it to no. Due date determines how long is it going to be reserved for. Remarks is where we can add any notes or description or anything that we want to document about this reservation. Cancel reservation user and cancellation date. Uh, those get filled in automatically in case you change reserve quantity to no. And this is to document the date and the name of the user who canceled this reservation. So that covers this screen. We'll move on to the next. Next screen is goods received note. From this screen, we can place a request for adding new amounts of existing items in a warehouse. We can either do that using the screen itself or from an Excel sheet. We, of course, already know how to import from an Excel sheet. We went through it several times before. Uh, you will use the import from Excel tab. As for using the screen itself to place the request, what we do is add, select the branch and income number, um, I'm sorry, you will just select the branch and actually income number and date will both be uh, filled in automatically. And then an in income type, uh, we select it from the drop down menu based, of course, on the types that we have already set up from the request type screen. The four fields we just explained are all mandatory. You have to fill those in. Uh, then you need to select the warehouse, reference number, description, car number, driver name, all of those are optional fields. You can, of course, enter the relevant data if it needs documentation. As for cost center, if we have linked uh, the warehouse that we just selected to a single cost center, then that cost center will be selected automatically. However, if we had linked the warehouse with several cost centers, then in cost center field, we'll press F9 and select the one that we want to go with install production request in case we produce this item then here we will enter a number that will serve uh, as a request number for the production to start working on this item to produce and provide more of the selected item in the detailed data below we will press F9 in the item code to specify the item that we want to add new batches from the name and measurement unit uh, will be automatic and in quantity, you'll specify how much exactly do you need. Of course, you can enter the description if you need to add one. The third tab we have in this screen is additional data. And it is just a bunch of empty fields, basically, in case you uh, would like to record any further information that is based on your business needs. To make sure that the goods received note is valid, we, of course, have to approve it. So. After you click on save, you will click on the approval icon, which will bring up a window. And um, in that window, you will just change the status to approved and then save in order for the transaction to go through. We also want you guys to note that this screen does not affect the accounts or the stock. 
Next screen is request out transfer. Okay, so we use this screen to uh, place a request in case we're short on any item to uh, we're basically requesting a batch to be transferred from another warehouse. Uh, there are two tabs uh, that we will not talk about because we already know how to use them and those are additional data and import from Excel. Master details is where we select the branch and once we click on add, the system will give you the date and the request number. Then there is the uh, purpose of order or purpose for order request side uh, so those two fields are mandatory and by the way in request side you will need to specify who requested this transfer warehouse number is a mandatory field and here we select the warehouse that is requesting the transfer from warehouse is also mandatory and that is the warehouse we are uh, transferring from Department is the department that is requesting the transfer. As for cost center, you will select the cost center um, on which you want this uh, or you want the cost of the transferred items to reflect on. You can use the reservation number in case this transfer was actually reserved. Uh, so we made a request for it before we actually proceeded with it. Uh, here we will enter the items information and uh, the most important thing to clarify uh, is the quantity exactly that you're requesting for this transfer. The system will also show you the available quantity by the way and in reserved quantity choose yes if you want to make a reservation or no if you would like to cancel it and that is if the transfer request is related to a previous reservation. To date is also related to uh, the reservation if one exists and in description you can add any notes as for the final tab we have is fill in data the system uh, the system gives you nine options uh, that you can use to import the data that you want to fill in uh, examples of these options are if you would like to transfer items that came on a specific purchase invoice or even a sales invoice and so on. After you pick the right one, you will enter the document number here. Click on fill item and the system will fill in all the data that's related to this item. In quantity field, uh, it will set all the quantity that came on that document to be transferred in full to the warehouse that you want. Also note that you will need to approve this request so the transfer would go through. And the transfer, by the way, will be executed from the warehouse transfer screen. Next screen, and that will be in common stock. This one contains five tabs. We're familiar already with additional data, import from Excel, and also fill in data. Fill in data is, of course, if the user would like to import the data from a document. As for master details, that is where we enter all the main data that's related to the incoming process. In branch, you will select the branch that is executing this transaction. As for incoming type, you will select from the type that you've already set up before. Jira in number and Jira in date. Uh, it's the number of the um, GRI number is basically the number of the goods received note and the date of it as well. And both of these will be filled in automatically. We will select the warehouse that is receiving uh, in the warehouse field. And in account number, you can enter, for example, the vendor's account who supply this item. Uh, for example, let's select foreign vendors. All right, and then. Uh, we will select a specific vendor who will provide this batch from detailed account. Of course, all of these fields work by clicking on the field itself and then you press on F9 to bring up the list of the recorded data. Then you will select the right one, whether it's a warehouse or a vendor and so on. We just want to establish that rule throughout the system. When we select the vendor, you will need to specify the currency and in case this vendor is linked to only one currency, then the system will select it by default. If it's linked to more than one currency though, then you um, will, after you select the vendor, the system will open up a window 
with all of the currencies that are linked to that vendor so you can make your selection. So you can choose the one that you want to go with for this transaction. Exchange rate is applied according to uh, the currency that you chose. Description is automatically filled in. It says in common and of course you can change that. Reference number and number of attached, car number, driver name, all of those are optional. Due date is optional as well. And due date, by the way, is considered the date um, when you will receive. So the day exactly on which you will be receiving this batch. All right, so uh, item costing in the drop down menu, we have last incoming cost weighted average cost and vendor price you will select the cost of the item according to your business needs then you will select the cost center from the drop down menu beneficiary branch you will select the branch that will benefit from this transaction then we have methods of tax calculation select the calculation method based on the data that you entered in the tax screen and in the lower section, you will select the item from item code. And after you select the item, the name and the measurement unit will both be automatic. Enter the quantity. And of course, uh, in the cost field, you'll see the cost based on the choice that you've made in item costing. Tax will also be filled in uh, according to the choice that you've made in tax calculation. And the total will also come up automatically. The final tab we have is taxes. Uh, you can identify all the types of taxes applicable on this transaction um, according to the law, obviously. Now we'll talk about the next screen, outgoing stock. Same process as the previous screen, but of course here, uh, this is the opposite transaction for outgoing. Moving on to the next one, warehouse transfer. Same process as well except that um, in this screen we need to select the warehouse that is making the transfer and the warehouse which is receiving and that will be the warehouse number and uh, two warehouse fields so there's also another difference which is fill available quantity here the system will show you the available quantity or stock at the warehouse we're transferring from Another checkbox, uh, which is transfer payback. That means that we will directly extract the items we're transferring from the warehouse that's making the transfer to the warehouse requesting it. All good. So next screen. Warehouse transfer receiving. All right. So this one includes two tabs, master details and additional data. Additional data, as we all know by now, is a bunch of fields available for the user to uh, record any additional data as per the business needs. And as for master details, we'll find the branch field um, from which we can choose the branch that is receiving the transfer. We will select it from the drop down menu. Then we have receive type. In case we added types for warehouse receiving, you will find it here and you can select the proper one warehouse number this is the warehouse we're transferring to from warehouse the warehouse we're transferring from as for receive number uh, that is the number of the transaction itself and this one comes up automatically along with the date of the transaction description reference number fill that in accordingly in cost center we choose the cost center on which the cost of this transfer would reflect. And we have a checkbox uh, transfer return. That is in case the transfer is already done and we want to reverse it. So if we want to basically, you know, undo a transfer. Transfer number in case we want to perform the process of receiving from a specific transfer transaction. Here we will enter the reference number of that transfer transaction. Then we have fill items. We click on it and the system will bring up all of the items along with their data from the transfer and it will import it into the receiving transaction. So in other words, you're receiving, uh, you're receiving the same items that were in the transfer that you've selected. Customer code. 
in the drop down menu we select the customer we're selling these items to that is in case we're receiving these items to be sold to a specific customer driver number if you have a specific driver who will carry this out all right, so uh, that's it actually for the screen. Next one. Stock adjustment. And here we settle the differences that come up after the stock taken. The screen contains three tabs and each tab is considered a different way to use the screen. We'll start with the third tab, which is import from Excel. In case we close the stock differences in an Excel sheet, then we will just import that in the system. In fill in data, we can use this tab after clicking on add either manually or automatically. If we chose manual, then the system will not allow you to use the upper section. That means that in the table, the user will be entering item by item. If we chose automatic though, the first difference we noticed that fill items button will be activated and the system will allow data entry in the upper section. As for install from, we'll choose how we're importing the data we're adjusting. We have 17 different kinds of documents to choose from. And after you select the document, you can click on fill items and the system will fill in the data in the table based on the document that you selected. This means that you're making uh, the adjustment for this document only. After selecting automatic, you can also work on a whole, on a whole um, stock group. Uh, in group code, we had F9 to select the main stock group we're working on. To group code, uh, hit F9, and this is also the main stock group. From item code to item code, that is to select specific items from within the group. From warehouse to warehouse, that is to uh, determine the warehouses that contain the items we're adjusting the differences for. From date to date. Uh, there's the field also process for all display items. Now, we've selected a specific group and selected specific items within this group. The calculation to settle the differences will be applied on these selected items. Uh, in process for all display items, we'll find a plus and a minus sign. Next to it, a field in which we put the rate. So here we can choose, for example, an addition of 1% from the total count of the selected items, and the system will apply that. You can also deduct, of course. Then we click on process, so the system would start calculating the adjustment in the back end and it will give you the whole adjustment transaction after you click on fill items. Alright, so then we have a display method. We can either use the items names or codes. And that's basically everything for this tab manually and automatically. Let's talk a little bit about master details. Here we select the branch. Uh, as for the number of the adjustment and the date, both of those are automatic. Then we select the account number, head of nine, and choose the account on which the adjustment will be applied. Okay. Um, the currency link to the selected account, by the way, will also be applied. Description and reference number, optional. In cost center, you will head F9 and uh, you will select the cost center that you want this transaction to reflect on. As for supplier, that is in case we're choosing a specific supplier who is linked with a specific account and we choose the account from account number. In the table, we start creating the difference, uh, the difference settlement for each item separately as we choose the item code. And based on it, we will see the item name and measurement unit, available quantity, and also average cost. In quantity, of course, we'll punch in the quantity we will use to settle the difference. And in stock taken quantity, that is the quantity that is recorded um, on the system for this item. Stock taking quantity in time, that is the amount that we will count during the stock taking process itself. So um, then we have vendor code and vendor name. 
we can select a specific vendor and the name uh, will be filled in automatically. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe and we will see you again soon.